much is left? 75%. And he says, diet is likely the most important factor, even more so than exercise. And exercise, as you know, is very important. But diet, and so tonight we're going to talk about nutrition. Nutrition is one of my favorite subjects. And good nutrition, my friends, is essential for good health. We must have good nutrition. And so I'm going to give you some principles of good, nutri good nutrition. We're going to just break it down into three simple principles of good nutrition. First, choose the right kinds of food. And here we have the right kinds of foods. Fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables. And then choose the time to eat and choose the amount to eat. And so let's look at principle number one. For good nutrition, choose the right kinds of foods. What are the right kinds? Well, God tells us in Genesis 1.29, it says, and God said, who said? God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth and every tree with the seed, and it shall be for you for food. So God says, I have given you fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables. And you see all of these beautiful foods that you can get right here in Kenya. Wow, all these fruits and nuts and grains and vegetables. That's the Eden diet, a plant-based vegetarian diet. And my friends, you can certainly get it right here. And a plant-based diet was the diet chosen for us by the Creator. And we can't really improve upon this diet because we need all of these fresh things. And the very best is to eat as much as possible in as natural a state as possible. And look, we have the greens, the spinach, and the kale, and the lettuce, and the cabbage, and the Chinese cabbage and all these fruits, the grapes and the apples. And did you know that saying is true? An apple a day, my friends, will keep the doctor away. And so medical researchers have now discovered that some foods are protective foods against the killer diseases of the 21st century. What are those protective foods? They are plant-based foods, the fruits, the nuts, the grains, and the vegetables. And population groups who eat a wide variety of these protective foods actually have a reduced rate of cancer and heart disease. Now, Dr. Chitters talked about, uh, heart, uh, about cancer last night and some of the causes of cancer and we're going to talk about that again tonight because documented scientific evidence confirms the validity of a plant-based diet. But let's look at cancer in Kenya, right here in Africa. And it is said to be the third leading cause of death in Kenya after the infectious diseases and cardiovascular disease. And cancer is expected to grow in the sub-Saharan sub region by 85% by the year 2030. And the annual incidence of cancer right here in Kenya is about 28,000 new cases with an annual mortality or death of 22,000 cases. So look at that, that's 78.5%. Almost 80% of the victims don't survive from cancer. And I know this is the case all over the world. And those of you who are watching by Hope Channel or YouTube or some other medium, I can tell you that cancer is growing. So we want to look at how to prevent cancer because Kenya is facing a growing high demand for cancer treatments. So why not catch it before it comes? And you know, Dr. Colin Campbell, who wrote the China study that Dr. Chitty talked about last night, actually 
has given us scientific evidence of this whole food, whole grain, whole plant-based diet. And let's take a look at that and relate it to cancer because we want to know how we can reduce the risk or even avoid cancer before it comes. And Dr. Campbell has two theories that I want to make very simple for you. Theory number one he calls, and I'm kind of summarizing in his book, he calls it the local the theory. And this is a treatment method of cancer that is surgery or radiation or chemotherapy. Now he's very balanced and he says, if you need surgery and you need to cut it out, cut it out. And you may even need radiation or chemotherapy. But why don't we get to the bottom of the line and say, what is the cause of the cancer in the first place? And so he has a second theory. And that theory is called the constitutional theory. And that's nutrition's association with cancer. Wow. You mean nutrition has something to do with cancer? Either what we are eating or what we are not eating. And then even the possibility for cancer treatment. In other words, these foods right here, all these wonderful black grapes and red grapes and cabbage and all these greens and nuts, wow, that's a possibility for even cancer treatment. And so cancer, but it seems that cancer professionals continue, my friends, to ignore the nutritional effect. This is what Dr. Campbell is saying relying heavily on surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. And we often even hear about hospital patients who are being given the ordinary fare or animal products following an operation. So here they go into the hospital, they have chemotherapy, they have radiation or even surgery, and then they bring them, bring them their tray of food, and it's animal products the very thing that caused the cancer in the first place. And so the constitutional theory proposes that the, de that the disease of cancer has deeper origins, like involving the complex pathways of metabolism that characterize nutrition's function. And so they're saying, why not give these wonderful foods, why not give them uh, that for our, their diet. And in our experimental animal research, Dr. Campbell found this. We found that increasing the carcinogen dose caused a linear increase in the formation of the mutations. Well, they expected that, they said, as we expected, but that those mutations, those cancer cells, were actually developed into cancer when they were promoted by animal protein. You see, my friends, God never intended us to kill animals and eat them. He gave us all these wonderful fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables, and all these wonderful seeds, these sunflower seeds, and these chia seeds, and these sesame seeds, and all of these things for us to eat. And in the China study that, again, Dr. Chitty talked about, we repeatedly established the ability of higher consumption of milk-based protein, casein, to dramatically, my friends, increase a growth hormone associated with increased cancer development. So when people were drinking cow's milk that were designed for the calves, not human beings, then they developed the cancer. And so they found in their laboratory studies that actually as they ate the animal food that they had a larger percent of liver cancer death, mortality. And so over 200 studies, my friends, in the last 25 years has shown that eating plant-based foods, you can actually reduce the cancer by 50%, at least by 50%. 
And so the evidence is clear. That's what Dr. Campbell says. Chronic disease increases with even a small intake of animal-based proteins. Eating more animal-based proteins also is associated with eating fewer of these wonderful foods that we have that are all plant-based. Because if you're eating more animal foods, you can only eat so much, then you're eating less of these. So we need to eat more. And we need to discover why people are dying from this cancer, this horrible disease. Well, Ellen White wrote back in 1868, she wrote, many, many die of diseases wholly due to meat eating when the real cause is scarcely suspected by themselves or others. They're dying from eating animal products and they don't even know it because God intended us to eat the fruits, the nuts, the grains, and the vegetables. And then she says, the light given me is that it won't be very long before we shall have to give up using any animal food even milk will have to be discarded. You know why? Because disease is increasing rapidly. And so I want to share with you how science is confirming this. And Loma Linda University School of Public Health, our Seventh-day Adventist school, did an extensive study. And the new study associates intake of dairy milk with a greater risk of breast cancer. In fact, the study was done on 53,000 North American women for nearly eight years. That's a good study. 53,000 people and it took eight years. And they, dis they named the name of the study Dairy, Soy, and Risk of Breast Cancer. And it said, those confounded milks, the milk between the dairy and the soy, published in the International Journal of Epidemiology, found that even relatively moderate amounts of dairy milk consumption can increase women's risk of breast cancer up to even 80% depending on the amount that was consumed. In fact, the observation observational study gives fairly strong evidence, my friends, that either dairy milk or some factor closely related to drinking dairy milk is a cause, not a link, my friends, but a cause of breast cancer in women. So I want to eat these wonderful foods that God has given us, don't you? Because I don't want to get those horrible diseases. But look here, he said, by drinking up to one cup of dairy milk per day, the associated risk went up to 50%. And for those drinking two or three cups of dairy milk per day, the risk increased further to 70 to 80%. And so, my friends, no clear associations were found between the soy products and breast cancer if it was independent of using any dairy. So we have all these beans, all these soybeans even, all these things. Here are some soybeans right here. And you can make soy milk and tofu and all kinds of things. And then you have all these nuts. There are almond nuts, so we can make almond milk. You have all these foods where you can replace the dairy products. And so, first, a plant-based diet reduces the risk of cancer. In fact, but numerous studies also from Harvard University Medical School says that it appeared to be a, there appeared to be a strong link of eating fruits and vegetables, all of these things, with a protection against cancer. I want to protect, and I want my friends all to protect themselves against these killer diseases. And by eating these foods, you can do just that. Now, there's another advantage of a plant, total vegetarian diet, and that is you can actually reduce the risk and even reverse heart disease. 
Science has shown us that you can reverse, in fact, the only way to reverse heart disease is on a plant-based diet, and that has been demonstrated by Dr. Esselstein at Cleveland Clinic. And then plant food also has no cholesterol. There's no cholesterol in that nice sham burger that I made that I have in my cookbook made out of oats and natural plant foods. There's no cholesterol in there. But animal foods are high, my friends, in cholesterol, and we want to cut down on the cholesterol. But someone says, I don't think I'm going to get adequate nutrition if I only eat these foods. Well, a total vegetarian diet contains adequate carbohydrates, and yes, we need those carbs, those good carbs, not refined carbs. And we need the protein, and we need the vitamins and the minerals, but all this has it. In fact, one cup of these nuts, one cup of nuts contains about 16 grams of protein. So we have lots of good natural ingredients in a plant-based diet. And we are, they're packed with nutrients, proteins, vitamins, phytochemicals, and antioxidants. In fact, a vegetarian diet is rich in phytochemicals and antioxidants. Well, what are phytochemicals, you ask? Well, they are protective plant food chemicals that are only found in plant foods. All these phytochemicals. And what about antioxidants? Antioxidants are chemicals found in food that prevent or repair damage to the cells. They can either protect with all these foods or you can even uh, repair damage. And, these, and if you affect these cells, it leads to free radicals. And it's these free radicals, my friends, that set the stage for cancer, for heart disease, for other diseases and premature aging. And then Alzheimer's, my friends, is on the rise around the world. In fact, worldwide, nearly 44 million people have Alzheimer's disease or a related dementia. And so Alzheimer's is growing. But Harvard University Medical School has done many studies, and in a book that they put out called A Guide to Cognitive Fitness, they said researchers at Harvard Medical School have identified six cornerstones to any effective brain health and cognitive fitness. They should all be done together, six cornerstones. And together, these can yield real results, leading to changes in both the brain structure and function. You want to know what these six cornerstones are? Well, the first one was eat a plant-based diet. A plant, all of these wonderful foods, my friends. Oh, these tomatoes are so high in phytochemicals. I eat tomatoes almost every day, and I had some today as well. And so we want to eat these plant-based foods. And did you know that the second one is exercise, another one of God's remedies, and then get enough sleep? and manage your stress. Yes, Dr. Chitter talked about that. That's another one of God's remedies, having love and trust in God, and then nurture social contacts, and then continue to challenge your brain. So let's look at the advantages of a total vegetarian diet. We're going to lower blood cholesterol, lower blood pressure, lower certain risk of cancer, lowers even the risk of osteoporosis, low, and it's going to improve diabetes symptoms. In fact, you can reverse diabetes and enhance vigor and endurance. You're going to have more vigor and energy, my friends, and lengthen your lifespan. You're going to live longer. There are so many advantages. The science is clear. Eating the right foods, my friends, leads to a longer, healthier life. And so I've come up with what I call the hierarchy of foods. How do you know what to eat? Well, the first on the list is the, on, in the hierarchy of foods is actually those things just as they came forth from the hand of the Creator. All these fresh fruits. 
and vegetables. Just eat them fresh and the nuts and the seeds. And did you know that these nuts, one handful of nuts, just take a handful of these nuts and eat that five times a week and you will actually reduce your risk of cancer. You will reduce, risk, reduce your risk of heart disease by 50%. And so that's, eat, and eat that in abundance. And then the next one is actually processed just a little bit because they're cooked. And you cook your, to make your bread and your legumes, your beans. And that's the next one. Eat those plentifully. And then you have nutritious processed foods like my homemade applesauce. We took fresh apples from the trees. And then my husband and I do about 150 quarts of homemade applesauce, no sugar in it, just the fresh apples, and we use that as one of our staples in our home. It's processed enough to ensure the seal so we can have it all winter, but that's the next one, eat it plentifully. But then there's the dairy and the eggs. We should actually limit those until we can avoid them. And then the lean meats that we talked about the other night the animal products, but they're clean foods, but we should limit them until we can avoid them. And then the unhealthy processed foods, like the sugar-laden foods and all the ultra-processed foods and the soft drinks, we should actually get rid of those as soon as possible because that's destroying our health. And then there's the bacon and the coal cuts and all the processed meats. Uh, meats and the unclean food. We should avoid that completely. And then, of course, avoid the tea, the alcohol, the coffee, and all of those things that are destroying our health. But look, let's look at Kenya's traditional diet. The traditional foods that are part of Kenya's heritage and culture for many years include this, include the amaranth, that's a grain. The spinach, here we have the spinach right here. The arrowroot, I had arrowroot soup yesterday. It was delicious. And cow peas and pumpkin and corn. Here you have the corn and you have the traditional kale over here, it's the kale. And then you have the water spinach and the beans and the rice. Also included are the roots and the tubers produced in Kenya, which include the Irish potatoes and the sweet potatoes and the cassava, the yams and the cocoa yams. All of these foods, my friends, are the foods right here that you have in Kenya are the ones that God designed for our health. And so increase your consumption of all of these wonderful foods, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and whole grains. So we better go on to the second principle. We know that these are the best foods. There's no question about it. We, science is proving that. The next principle is eat at the right times. Well, what are the right times? Establish regular eating habits. And have two or three meals at the most with nothing between. And science is showing also that that's how you can stay healthy. Scientific evidence has proven even that breakfast, the meal that breaks the fast of the night, breakfast, is the most important meal of the day. I jumpstart my husband's day every day with a good breakfast. We eat a healthy breakfast of fruits, nuts, whole grain cereals, and whole grain breads. And this actually will help reduce the risk of those killer diseases. So what is the best schedule for us? Well, we should have five hours in between our meals. So if you eat breakfast at 7 o'clock, then you would eat again at 12 o'clock or in 6 o'clock. Or if you eat breakfast at 8 o'clock, you'd eat again at 1 o'clock or 1.30, 2 o'clock. And then supper, the lightest meal of the day, or even skip that meal. And five hours at least should elapse between our meal. And always bear in mind, Ellen White says, that if you'd give it a try, two meals would actually even be better than three. So what are the advantages of eating a light supper or even intermittent fasting? You're going to be able to control your weight. 
You're going to have an appetite for breakfast. Your food is going to digest more quickly. Sleep is even going to be better and deeper and more sound. And actually, you're going to have longevity because that's going to be increased. And so intermittent fasting, my friends, is one of God's health principles for longevity. And again, uh, science shows us that fasting for as little as 16 hours can help us against counteracting some of these diseases. So how do you do this? How do you do this? How do you accomplish this? Well, you can have your breakfast anywhere between 8 and 10 o'clock and your dinner anytime between 1 and 4 o'clock, and then you have nothing in the evening. That's what we're doing right here in Kenya. We have a wonderful breakfast, and then we eat a wonderful main dinner here that is so good with all these foods that we're talking about, the butternut squash and the pumpkin and the peas and, and all of these wonderful foods right here. And then the last principle is eat the right amount. Well, how do you know what the right amount is? I don't know what the right amount for you is, but I know what the principle is, and the principle is simply this. If you're gaining weight, and women, if you have around the waist, take a measurement, and if you're more than 35 around the waist, then you have a problem. And, so, <laughs> and men, if you are more than 40 around the waist, you have what we call that visceral fat, and this is not good for your health. And so, but if you're losing weight, you're not eating enough. But if you're gaining weight, then you're eating too much. And so you need to eat enough to maintain your ideal weight. And so that is so important. So how do we know what to eat and when to eat? Well, we're told that all of the obesity lies in a sedentary lifestyle and eating too many calories and too much fat. So let's review all of this. Choose the right kind of foods. Choose these wonderful tomatoes where you're going to get lots of phytochemicals and carrots. I had, we had carrot soup for lunch today, and I'm going to get some vitamin A right there, and I'm going to get all of these good nutrients with this. And so plan well, make it nutritious, make it nutri uh, delicious, and make it colorful. You see all the different colors that God has given us. Isn't God great? He gives us not just one thing, but he gives us many things with lots of colors. So color means nutrition. Make sure your plate is full of color. And my prescription for you today, my friends, is simply this. Eat a wide variety of these fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables that we have not only here in Kenya, but around the world. I have seen them around the world. And so my teeny tips are adopt a plant-based diet, follow the hierarchy of foods, eat a healthy cat from healthy categories every day from something here, and allow five hours between your meals, eat a substantial breakfast, eat dinner in the middle of the afternoon and nothing until breakfast, and you will feel better, look better, and be happier. So in 3 John 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So may God bless you as you follow God's way, because God's way, my friends, is always the best way.